In this video, we'll learn about the EQ section in H-Reverb. Now, the EQ section has two different parts. We have the early reflections filter up here, and the rest of the section is the Reverb EQ. Let's take a look at the early reflection filter first. What this allows us to do is control the high frequencies in our early reflections. And in doing so, we can change our perception of the surfaces in the room we're trying to create. So our early reflection filter has two basic parameters. We have gain and we have frequency. In the graph below, you can visualize where this is set by this white line. This blue line is our EQ graph, and we'll look at that in a moment. For gain, we can click and drag up and down. We have as much as 80 dB of cut and as much as 12 dB of boost for our early reflection filters. To adjust our cutoff frequency for our filter, we can click and hold and drag left and right to increase the frequency as high as 14 kilohertz and as low as about 1K or 1000 hertz. Now, if you prefer, you can adjust both with this little handle. It's the white handle with crosshairs. So I can click and drag up and down, left and right, and a combination of the two. Now, what you'll find as you adjust this filter, more high frequencies gives us the perception that the room has more hard, flat surfaces like glass or smooth stone. As we roll off the high frequencies for our early reflections, it gives us the perception that the room has more soft surfaces, perhaps curtains or even acoustical foam. Now to hear this, I'll adjust my early reflection and tail blend over towards more early reflections. Then we'll listen for the effect. I'll start at a more neutral setting, and then we'll play some of the snare drum through it. kind of softens or dulls down those early reflections. And don't forget that in addition to adjusting gain, we can change our roll-off frequency to make this a much more subtle effect. So while it's pretty simple, adjusting the high frequencies with this early reflection filter can really change the way we perceive the room we're in. Now let's take a look at the reverb's EQ section. Now this will affect our reverb tail. So I'm gonna bring my reverb tail back up a bit and we can apply EQ in a number of different ways to this reverb tail. This is a four band EQ. We have a low frequency shelf band, a high frequency shelf band, and two bell curve bands, one for low mids and one for high mids. Each of these bands can be turned on or off just by clicking the button above each one. So if you're only gonna use one or two, you can easily turn them off to make sure they're not in use. Now the parameters for these EQ bands are pretty typical. We have gain, that's this G row. We have frequency, that's this F row. And for our bell curve EQs, we have Q, which would be the width of that bell curve. Now like the parameters for the early reflection filter, we can adjust these just by clicking and dragging. So for gain, I can drag up or down. For frequency, I can drag left and right. And for Q, I can drag up and down as well. If you prefer, you can use these dots or handles for each one of the bands. You'll notice that when you're off, the blue line in the graph is flat. As I start turning these on, you'll start to notice a difference. So for example, if I turn on my low mid band, you'll start to see a bell curve appear, and that's a graphical display of how we're EQing our reverb tail. Now, for something like the snare drum I've been working with, I'd probably like to roll off some of the high frequencies. So I'm gonna start with the high shelf EQ and I'll adjust it using this handle. It kind of cools down that reverb tail by reducing some of the high frequencies. We don't get so much sizzle, but we still get the impression that we're in a big place. Now for this particular track, I'd like to accentuate maybe some of the low mid frequencies. So I'll turn on my low mid band, and again, I'll use this anchor here to adjust it. And an easy way to compare it all is just to turn on and off each band.
When I apply EQ to a reverb tail, as in this case, I think less technically or musically about the frequencies I'm working with and more about the space that I'm trying to create. Fewer high frequencies seems to give me more distance from the source, the snare drum, and the walls around it, and it also gives the sense that there are fewer hard surfaces, maybe a lot of features in the room that allow for more diffuse echoes and reverb. And by accentuating some of the lower frequencies, it seems to add to the perceived size, as if I were in a big concert hall or something. So applying EQ helps me change the shape and feel of the room that I'm trying to create, in addition to things like reverb time, size, density, and so on. In our next video, we'll learn about the time filter section in H Reverb. Thanks for watching.